Hello everybody, this is Mehdi. In this video, I'm gonna solve some problems related to the final exam of MTH 101 course Calculus 1. So, let's get started. At first, let's solve problem number 1. Take the integral of f of x equals cosecant x cotangent x minus 1 over 2x dx. Normally, we use uppercase f to show the antiderivative or integral of a function, uppercase f of x. To solve the problem, we know that the derivative of cosecant x is minus cosecant x times cotangent x. And we know that integration is the opposite action of differentiation or taking the derivative. As you see, in this question, we have two terms, cosecant x cotangent x and minus 1 over 2x dx. To solve the first term, which is cosecant x cotangent x, just look at this thing. We have to consider a negative. So, the integral of first term is minus cosecant x. Don't forget to consider that minus sign in front of cosecant x. How about the second term? At first, let's rewrite minus 1 over 2x like this. Minus 1 over 2 times 1 over x. And you know that the integral of 1 over x is ln absolute value of x. Because the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So, let's write minus 1 over 2 as the coefficient and ln x as the integral of 1 over x. Just don't forget to consider plus c at the end. So, this is the final answer for question number 1. Now, let's try to solve question number 2. Evaluate limit as x approaches negative infinity for x times e to the power of x using the L'Hopital's rule. So, limit as x approaches negative infinity for x times e to the power of x. What we have to do is this. To be able to use the L'Hopital rule, we have to rewrite this thing in the form of a fraction. So, it is going to be equal to limit as x approaches negative infinity. Now, let's consider a fraction. I'm gonna keep x on top. So, we have x divided by... Now, move this thing, e to the x. And we have to consider a minus sign because the sign is going to be changed by moving from top to the bottom. So, if x approaches negative infinity, the top function x approaches negative infinity. And e to the minus infinity approaches e to the positive infinity. So, e to that thing is approaching infinity. As you see, we have a fraction on top. Minus infinity is divided by infinity, regardless of the sign. Now, we can apply the L'Hopital rule. So, we have limit as x approaches 
negative infinity. Now, let's take the derivative of the functions. The derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of the bottom function, it is an exponential function e to the that thing. But using the chain rule, as you see, the exponent is not a simple function. We have to multiply by the derivative of this inside function. The derivative of minus x is minus 1. So, limit as x approaches negative infinity 1 over minus e to the negative x. On top we have a number. That number is divided by e to the negative negative infinity. So it is something like 1 over negative infinity. If 1 is divided by minus infinity, the answer is going to be 0. Question number 3. Differentiate f of x equals ln x squared minus inverse cosine 3x. f prime of x equals as you see, this is composed of two terms. The first one is a natural log and the next one is inverse trig function. So, you know that when it comes to taking the derivative of logarithm, natural logarithm functions, it is going to be 1 over that thing and that thing is x squared in this example. But, you see that x squared is not a simple x, it is an inside function. What we have to do is to take the derivative of that inside function. So we have 2x. 2x is the derivative of x squared. Minus the second term is inverse cosine of 3x. So we have to know the related formula. The derivative of inverse cosine is minus 1 over radical 1 minus that thing is to the power of 2. As you see, this is 3x in this example. So 3x is raised to the power of 2. Again, you see that 3x is not a simple variable. So we have to take the derivative of that inside function. So it is going to be 3. We have to consider this using the chain rule. Now, x cancels the power of 2 in the first term. And these two minus signs cancels each other. Let's simplify the first term like 2 over x plus, And I'm going to move this 3 to the top of the next term. We have 3 divided by radical 1 minus 9x squared. So this is the final answer for question number 3. Now let's solve question number 4. Differentiate f of x equals inverse secant of 5x times Radical 3x minus 2x squared, the fifth root. We write the original function like this. f of x equals inverse secant of 5x times, to get rid of that radical, I'm going to rewrite that like 3x minus 2x squared to the power of 1 over 5. As you see, there are two functions are multiplied by. Assume that the first one is f and the next is g. So, you know that based on the product rule, f dot g prime equals f prime g plus g prime f. So, 
f prime of x equals the first one is an inverse trig function so you have to know its formula it is going to be 1 over absolute value of 5x radical that thing 5x squared minus 1 so this is f prime times g original next function it is 3x minus 2x squared to the power of 1 over 5 plus g prime so to take the derivative of the next term we have to apply power rule just bring down that 1 over 5 which is the exponent write it as the coefficient 3x minus 2x squared now reduce that power by 1 1 over 5 minus 1 is going to be negative 4 over 5 but as you see this is not simple variable we have to take the derivative of that inside function so the derivative of 3x is 3 and the derivative of next term 2 comes as a coefficient we have minus 4 times x to the 1 this is multiplied by the original first function which is inverse secant of 5x this is the final answer anyway we can simplify this thing more but i'm gonna skip that now let's solve the next problem take the derivative of f of x equals 0.2x squared plus 3x minus 55 using the definition of the derivatives as you know the definition of derivative f prime of x is this thing we have to do a limit process limit as h approaches zero for this statement actually a fraction on top f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h now let's construct this limit process so limit as h approaches zero for this statement just plug in x plus h for x in the original given function so it is 0.2 instead of x let's write x plus h to the power of 2 plus 3 instead of x again x plus h minus 55 minus f of x just you know rewrite the given function o 0.2 squared plus 3x minus 55 all divided by h now let's do some algebraic process actually limit as h approaches 0 now let's distribute this 0.2 we have 0.2x squared plus 0.4xh plus 0.2h squared using your algebraic knowledge plus 3x plus 3h minus 55 now consider this negative for all terms inside the parentheses we have minus 0.2x squared minus 3x plus 55 over h as you see the first term cancels 
Sting minus 55 cancels plus 55 and plus 3x cancels minus 3x so we have limit as h approaches 0 I'm gonna factor out this h you know on top so we have h times 0.4 x from the next from the first one plus 0.2 h from the middle one and finally plus 3 from the last term divided by h h cancels h and as you see h approaches 0 so the middle term is going to be 0 so we have 0.4 x as you see x is independent of h so we can keep 0.4 x as is plus 3 which is a constant and this is the final answer for this question in this example as you see it is requested to solve the problem using the definition of the derivative so we cannot directly use the power rule to solve this problem so pay attention to this thing when it is requested to you know consider the definition of derivative we cannot apply the power rule to take the derivative directly now let's solve the final question question number three prove the statement that limit as x approaches 2.54 to x minus 7 equals negative 2 it means that as x approaches 2.5 so the absolute value of x minus that point 2.5 is less than delta if we have this thing then the absolute value of function 2x minus 7 minus the limit value which is negative 2 in this example must be less than epsilon now let's simplify 2x minus 7 plus 2 absolute value of this thing is less than epsilon 2x minus 5 is less than epsilon now let's factor out 2 so we have 2 absolute value of x minus 2.5 is less than epsilon finally x minus 2.5 is going to be less than epsilon over 2 just compare this one with this one so as you see we can identify a relationship between delta and epsilon so delta equals epsilon over 2 and you are done in this video i solved some problems related to the final exam of calculus 1 mth 101 course so if you enjoy please subscribe to this channel thank you